When it comes to lost media, rumors can run rampant with little to no evidence whatsoever. I mean, it's incredibly easy to make up something and state that it's simply lost of time to explain why you don't have any proof to back up your claims. Sometimes information is even readily available that showcases how these don't exist. Yet we just don't accept them because it's the mystery that these things could exist that's so exciting. Well, today we're going to be looking at that information to debunk some of these rumors. Let's take a look at lost media that never existed. With an episode title like Special Ed, it's just begging for urban legends and rumors to pop up. This episode of Ed, Ed and Eddie was a proposed concept during the creation of the series in the 1990s. The only evidence that confirms this episode was planned comes from an interview with series creator Danny Antonucci, where he stated that the episode never came to fruition due to being too real. No storyboards or scripts were created, so any actual information about the content of the episode remains unknown. Despite this, many people believe that materials were created for the episode, and just became lost due to time. This was debunked on October 10th, 2016, when Bedhead Bernie proved that this episode never got past the concept stage, citing a query with a storyboard artist from the show, that nobody from AKA Cartoon the production company behind the series, remembered anything about the episode, cementing its status as a simple idea that never made it past a few talks. It's unknown what Antonucci could have meant by too real, but given the title of the episode, perhaps it focused on mental health or genetic disorders. While we're on the topic of Ed, Ed, and Eddie, there are a few video games based on the series that have been made over the years. Jawbreakers on the Game Boy Advance, Scam of the Century on the DS, and the Miss Adventures on basically everything available at the time. Granted, that's only three titles, but for a single series, that's actually pretty impressive. According to the rumor though, it was almost four titles instead. Junkyard Scramble was a rumored Game Boy Color game based on the series developed by Crawfish Interactive and published by BAM Entertainment. It was thought to be a puzzle game that would cost around $29.99. It even had a page on IGN and an eBay listing for it. Most believe the game was cancelled in favor of Jawbreakers on the Game Boy Advance, which was also published by BAM, but was a platformer instead of a puzzle game. All rumors of this game's existence came to an abrupt halt on October 1st, 2017, when Lost Media Wiki user KamiKid uploaded a video to his YouTube channel where he details his recent interactions with Cameron Shepard, who worked at Crawfish Interactive at the time of this game's supposed development. Shepard stated that he and several other Crawfish employees searched for anything related to the game on their computers, but couldn't find anything leading us to believe that people simply confuse this game for Jawbreakers. It's unknown where the title, platform, and gameplay genre rumors came from, but it mostly was like a game of telephone where the truth became more and more distorted with each retelling. From 1996 to 2000, Nickelodeon ran a sketch comedy animated series known as Kablam. The series had a total of 48 episodes over its four season run, with little to no mystery or events surrounding any of its existence. It ended, and that was it. So why are we talking about it? Well, an episode known as Episode 29 appeared on TV.com and Wikipedia episode guides in the early 2000s, leading many to believe there was a lost episode of the series. Now, the actual 29th episode was called Your Logo Here, and it aired naturally and can be viewed online. But the rumor suggested that this was an entirely separate episode that was simply called episode 29, not the actual 29th episode of the series. The plot was rumored to be as follows. Henry and June finally end their comic book series. June reveals her crush to Henry and kisses him, and they say goodbye to their audience. However, given the high ratings of the series, this plot was scrapped in favor of continuing the show. This was circulated around the internet for years until December 7th, 2015, when the creator of Henry and June, Mark Merrick, 
finally had enough and decided to put the rumor to rest. He released a full episode of the series on the Kablam Corner on his website, simply titled Episode 29. Upon playing the episode, it was just your logo here, the actual 29th episode of the series. This was just his cheeky way of saying, Episode 29 does not exist. In 2011, Merrick also left a comment on a now defunct fan site where he stated that Henry and June do not have feelings for each other, further cementing that this episode never existed. However, no screenshot was ever taken of this comment, so I'm not sure if it's valid. Many who claim to have seen this episode are most likely confusing it with another episode with a similar premise. Most descriptions of episode 29 involve it being like an award show of sorts, which was already a scenario that was explored in the episode Resistance is Futile and the Life with Loopy Birthday Calibration. Others believe that since episode 29 was supposed to be the finale, its segments were repurposed into the Life with Loopy Birthday special after they discovered that they were being renewed. But a September 1998 TV Guide deconfirms that by showing that the special would have aired far before episode 29 would have. So yeah, just another case of people misremembering and mixing up episodes that already existed. On April 18, 1983, the Disney Channel launched Nationwide, along with several original programs such as You and Me Kid, Contraption, Mouser Size, and Welcome to Pooh Corner. However, rumors were circulating that a fifth original program was meant to premiere alongside these four, a series titled Dream Finders. The series was actually advertised in the official Disney Channel magazine, meaning that the show as a concept did actually exist at one point. It was described as a show about a group of children in a real-world setting coming across problems. The Dreamfinder, or Old Eli as they called him, would take the kids to the realm of imagination, where they would use their imagination to find a creative solution. The villain of the show was known as Fear, and would try to steer the children into a dark world called the Bewilderness. Although the show never aired, an illustration of Old Eli appears in the magazine, as well as an appearance by him in the countdown to the launch of Disney Channel. The search for the series was fairly uneventful until December 12, 2016, where Lost Media Wiki user C. Sassenti posted a thread asking for people to help find the series. A few days later, on the 16th, user The Raincrafter was able to track down and make contact with a writer for the series, who provided him with a script of an episode titled Just in Time. The script, along with other information provided by the writer, confirmed many of the speculations about the series, as well as the description in the magazine. The official archives of D23, the fan club website of Disney, contains a brief tidbit of information about Dreamfinders. Dave Smith, the chief archivist and emeritus, confirms that no episodes were ever completed. The original series of Pokemon had its fair share of controversial episodes, from Cyber Soldier Porygon, which caused seizures across Japan, to Beauty and the Beach, where there's a scene with James using inflatable breasts that was banned in America. There's another episode that was rumored to have been dubbed in English, but was ultimately banned, that being The Legend of Dratini. The plot follows Ash and the gang making it to the Safari Zone, then asking the elderly director about the existence of a Dratini who is being treated as a legendary Pokemon for some reason. Ash sees a basket of safari balls and a fishing rod and eagerly grabs them. The director stops him and points a gun at his head, which is uh, pretty fucked up for the series. For America, Pokemon was dubbed by 4Kids Entertainment, who are known for heavily censoring any sort of controversial themes as well as any reference to Japanese culture for some reason. Given the presence of a real-ass gun in this episode, four kids immediately banned it, and no English dub was ever produced. However, footage of this episode was used in the pokey rap that four kids produced, meaning that they had access to the footage at one point. Many fans speculated that an English dub did exist, but simply was never aired. But this was later deconfirmed at Anime Midwest 2015 by Brock's voice actor, Eric Stewart. 
I don't know if you're aware of the band Pokemon episodes, one of which involved a man holding a gun against yep. Ash and the gang. Was there ever an English dub for that specific episode? No. So good question about banning episodes. So, so, so the way it works is this: every script, every, um, so every episode, every, every uh, uh, character name, all of that stuff goes through the filter of the network. So yeah, it would be great if you could just keep things exactly the way they were. But that's not the way Saturday morning cartoons work because it's geared towards children in America. So an episode where someone's pointing a gun at, the, at someone's head might work on the Japanese anime. It might work on Adult Swim, not for kids but show. not for kids shows. So all of the tweaks that you If there's one genre that ruled the 90s, it was the 3D platformer. Thanks to the success of Super Mario 64, Spyro the Dragon, and Banjo-Kazooie, it seemed everyone wanted to try their hand at making one. Well, there was one mascot that was there at the early stages of the genre that doesn't get brought up much anymore. Croc, Legend of the Gabos, was released on the PlayStation, Sega Saturn, and Windows in 1997, and was developed by Argonaut Games. It was a pretty average 3D platformer following the titular Croc, as he goes through missions, similar to that of Crash Bandicoot. Despite its average reception, Croc received a sequel two years later, simply titled Croc 2. And although both games were pretty mediocre, rumors began circulating for years about a third and final Croc game to finish off the trilogy, titled Croc 3 Stone of the Gobos. It was planned to be released in 2005, but Argonaut Games closed in 2004, leading them to sell the Croc IP to Zenimax Media Inc., who continued development on Croc 3 for a short while after, until it was ultimately cancelled. Truly a sad tale for a finale to what is surely somebody's favorite childhood franchise. Except that none of that happened. All the information above was sent to Unseen64, a website that discusses beta versions and cancelled games. After reporting the information, it was revealed that it was fake, after numerous inconsistencies were found, such as Croc being owned by ZeniMax Media now, when in actuality the rights never left the original creator. Unseen64 user Old Classic Gamer then decided to contact Bethesda Works, a subsidiary of ZeniMax, who confirmed that they did not, nor have they ever owned the Croc IP. Only one image was revealed from the prototype of Croc 3, and even that was proven to be a fake. Perhaps there was once a Croc 3 in development, but none of the information about it, such as its co-op mode or development troubles, have any weight to them. It's simply a hoax, and nothing more.